one of the missions, or the mission of our historical society is to present and preserve and educate the community and beyond about Erie County's history. Today, we are literally um, seeing that history is coming alive. With me this morning is our Director of Visitor Experience, Melanie Kubel Stanky, who ensures that our exhibits and our programs not only are educational and interesting, but they're vibrant and appealing to a wide variety of audience. And this morning, I have to look back at my, my uh, papers here. Um, we're going to, this morning, about to meet an extraordinary woman that I have the honor of introducing, Mrs. Annie Strong, the honoree of this exhibit, whose home on the corner of Peach and West 6th Street was, brought, was bought by Archbishop Gannon in 1941 to house Gannon College. Before I present to you, Mrs. Strong, I would also like to thank Gannon University, its faculty, including Dr. Jeff Bloodworth, and uh, Dr. Tim Downs, and where is Suzanne? Suzanne, <laughs> Richard, and everyone else who has embraced the Erie County Historical Society, and we have developed this partnership, this relationship between the university, and we have some of our work studies and interns in the audience, which is so great to see. So I would now like to turn it over to Mrs. Sandy Strong. Thank you very much. I am very honored by the recognition of this prestigious institution. I have constantly striven to improve the cultural and educational opportunities available to the citizens of Erie. And so I'm very proud to especially support Erie's schools in their efforts to improve the minds of the young people. We are living in an age of progress and innovation and it is imperative for anyone who wishes to become a leader in this age to display these qualities in the highest degree. And so we must especially support these educational institutions in their efforts. Though Erie may not be a particularly large city or one of national importance, there are still many occasions for advancement here, both in business and in society. When Dr. Rhodes, President Taft's physician, was here, he said that Erie entertained like a city five times its size, and the president agreed. President Taft's visit to Erie in September of 1911, just four years ago, has marked a high point in Erie's history. It caused quite a sensation. Most people in Erie aren't used to seeing such a prominent person, and they lined the streets wherever he went. But the minds of the populace are rather more intrigued by vulgar matters than those with a well-trained mind should be. The president did Erie a great honor by stopping here on his national tour. But do the people remember this honor? Do they remember the magnificence of the presidential motorcade? Or anything that the president said in his speech to the Erie Chamber of Commerce? No, the only thing they still talk about is this ridiculous story that President Taft got stuck in the bathtub during his stay at my home. That's such a disrespectful thing to say of a distinguished gentleman, the President of the United States. And so we see the importance of properly training young minds to recognize and take advantage of the opportunities presented for their advancement. However, President Taft and my husband did go to Yale together, and therefore he did in fact stay at my home during his time in Erie. He was a most gracious guest. That first evening he gave his speech to the Erie Chamber of Commerce, and then attended a dinner that I gave in his honor to ensure that he met all the proper city officials. I gave another as well the next day to include the other families with Washington connections. But I think the part the President most enjoyed, as I certainly did, was our motor tour on Sunday afternoon. I took the President and certain members of his party on a tour of some of Erie's prominent places. He was especially admiring of our beautiful bay, for of course in Washington they only have the Potomac River, and even then, he doesn't often get a day of leisure to enjoy it. But certainly, the benefits of progress and innovation do not have to be limited to businessmen or politicians. These new automobiles, for instance, add immensely to the enjoyment of leisure time. I own several myself, and I will often go out with a party of friends on a summer afternoon. 
though some gentlemen do say it isn't proper for a lady to drive a touring car. But when people's opinions aren't reasonable, I can't say that I pay them much mind. And certainly with each year, the automobiles are easier and easier to use. And I enjoy driving myself instead of always riding around with a chauffeur. Knowledge and improvements of health are constantly improving as well. Hammett Hospital, just a few blocks down the road, has been working on better treatments and better equipment ever since it opened. And this is creating a new demand for medical students. They have these new little pills now called aspirin, which do wonders for pain. And this machine called an x-ray, which takes photographs of bones. All of these improvements do require greater training for the staff, which is why I started Hammett Training School for Nurses in 1890. When we first opened, the students could graduate in just a few months. Now, of course, that period has been extended, as I'm sure the students here can attest to as well. But I still believe in the importance of practical, hands-on experience for the girls in the hospital and visiting homes, so that is always still included in the curriculum. And I believe it should be an important part of any educational experience. The opportunities for success must be taken by those who have the training necessary to recognize and take advantage of them. All of those who are interested in the future of society must pay special attention to innovations in education. And therefore, I am proud to support this place of learning and its efforts to teach young people to take their proper place in society. Thank you.